Wow, that is a giant sequoia tree. Isn't that a beautiful tree? If you love trees, love children, and love families, you are going to appreciate treehab. And treehab is what I'd like to share with you today. Treehab is where, by using tree climbing therapy and tree assisted therapy, we are able to create a place and a space and a program where people not only hug trees, but trees hug them back. 1997, I had the opportunity to meet this wonderful lady, Toshiko Hikosaka. And she shared this wonderful dream. She had a dream of leaving her wheelchair and climbing the world's largest tree, a giant sequoia. And so we kept trying and improving our, our program, and Hikosaka san kept getting a little bit stronger. And after three years, she was finally able to grab a rope and climb, even though it was just a few minutes, I mean, a few inches each time she could get out of her wheelchair and climb. And so in 2000, I was blessed with the opportunity to do something that no tree climber has ever done before. And that was to help Hikosaka san be the first paraplegic person in the world to climb a giant sequoia tree, 78 meters, the fifth largest tree in the world. <laughs> Kosaka-san, if you meet her, you'll love her. But she really had a difficult time with mobility on the ground. But when she's on a rope, she can climb a little bit with her special gear. And here she is, she's climbing up this tree. And she's so excited, but she's getting exhausted. Halfway up, she nearly passed out because she was so tired. And we said, maybe we should stop. You're going to die. And she said, I don't care if I die. I want to climb this tree. And so she finally, she got up near the top, and then when she reached the top of the tree, this is on the top of the tree, and she looked around, and she saw that she's on the top, and she saw the forest. She just came alive, and she said, I'm not a cripple. I am a challenger. Thank you. Thank you, tree. Thank you, everybody, for helping me. And we shed tears on the top of the tree together. And then she sort of, sort of bent over. And we thought it was over. She was going to die in her tree. But she was just exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> she was so exhausted that we couldn't climb down. <laughs> so we had to spend the night in the top of the tree. When we returned to Japan, we had no idea what was waiting for us because this was actually made into a TV documentary and it was shown all over Japan. And so when we got back to Japan, there were all these kids wanting to climb trees. They wanted to get out of their wheelchair too. They, had, they were born without fingers. They wanted to climb a tree. And so our small group of people decided that we would open the first tree climbing school in Japan, Tree Climbing Japan. And it was actually the first tree climbing school in the world dedicated to helping physically challenged people climb trees. And to use a few tree cliches, we were up a tree, out on a limb, and hanging by the seat of our pants. We <laughs> had no insurance. We didn't have the right gear. We were learning as we were going. But we wouldn't give up. We were groveling for permission to climb trees and asking governments to sort of the government to help us out and trying to find professionals and doctors that would support us. And there was a lot of hurdles. They're always in this when you pioneer something. But we never gave up. And we started seeing little miracles happening all over Japan up in the trees. And before we knew it, we had thousands of kids climbing in the trees, and many of them were disabled or had special challenges. 
And it became super exciting, and we started growing. And I would like to show you what that looks like. All of a sudden, all over, all over Japan in these parks, kids are climbing trees, they're learning about trees, they're loving trees. They're looking at the world from a different perspective. Some of the kids were being bullied and weren't able to go to school, but they could come climb trees with us and make friends. Other children were leaving their wheelchairs and climbing trees. And they were feeling powerful and they were making friends and wanting to try new things. Other people who had never dreamed they could do this were now up in the top of the trees. And they were saying that they felt less pain and that, that they didn't feel depressed. And there are all these wonderful things from tree climbing. And there was little boys like these two twins. They had never, ever thought that they could do something like this. But when they learned that they could climb a tree, they were on the top of the tree with their grandmother and their mother. And some of the kids that had emotional issues, they were now smiling in the treetops. And this was exciting. But we wanted to do more. And so I thought, there must be somebody in science that is actually doing something like this or have studied something that could help us make better programs. And I looked and I looked and I couldn't find that person. So I decided to pursue a doctorate in the physiological, psychological, and societal benefits of purpose-specific tree climbing programs. <laughs> Science is fun especially when you really want to learn something. And we want to know how people change when they climb trees. And so a small group of us at Nagoya University started doing all sorts of measurements. We had people climb trees and we measured their brain waves. We compared a live tree in the same forest as a tower, how people reacted physiologically to that. We start taking their pulse and looking at fractural things and see if they had more stress or less stress in the trees. We even started collecting saliva. And so this is rather gross, but we wanted to see what their stress hormones were when they were climbing trees and not climbing trees. And we started to get the scientific research that said, hey, people change when they climb trees. We started looking at pain sensitivity in the top of the trees compared to our tower. And there was a masking effect in the trees. We started looking at people's emotions. And we found that vitality and the positive emotions increased, but negative emotions decreased. And we wrote our first paper, the first paper about tree climbing. And we started learning that our fun factors also encouraged people to help trees and help the forest. We also learned something that would change our programs forever. We learned that the more our children and our participants understood trees, appreciate trees, and love the trees, the more benefits, therapeutic benefits they received from our programs. So we did a huge paradigm, to it, paradigm shift where we didn't only do tree climbing, but we started some other programs. And like, I would like to share two of those with you. And one of them is the Twin Tree Program. And this is a powerful program. We had the opportunity to work with children who had been terribly abused, children with terrible trauma in their life, who had a very difficult time talking about them, themselves and sharing their pain and their sadness. So we would take them in the forest and we would tell them how wonderful trees are. Trees are so kind, they're always giving. Trees never give up. Doesn't matter if their branches have been broken off or they've been hit by lightning, they keep growing and heading for the sky, looking for the light. They're positive. And as the kids start to understand and love and appreciate the trees, we would ask them, can you find a twin tree, a tree that reminds you of yourself, a tree that talks to you, a tree that reminds you of how you would like to be? And so these kids, they would go off in the forest and they would look for that tree. And they would find that tree 
And that tree would be just like them. And then they would come back and they would write down or they would tell us about their tree. And they were vicariously sharing how they felt. And I'd like to share a couple of those with you. This is Ichiro. He's 12. And he found the divorce tree. This is me when my parents fight. They pull me apart. Wow. This is Taka, who's 10, and he's struggling with a terminal illness. And he found this tree. This is my twin tree. Something really bad happened to this tree, but it didn't die. I'm going to get better too. And this next one was found by Alicia. She was terribly scarred and terribly abused and on her face. And we were in the forest and she found this ugly mushroom. And she looked at that mushroom and she looked at the mushroom and then she started getting some leaves and then she made a face on that mushroom. And she wrote, nothing is ugly when it smiles, even me, Alicia. These kids were starting to teach us things, and these kids were able to talk to counselors vicariously through the trees. Another program that I really love is the Magic Hand Program. Children that were born without fingers. And one of our children, he was born without fingers, and he had a bit of a stub of a thumb, and he was being bullied at school. And one night, he tried to cut it off because it wouldn't fit in his pocket. He couldn't hide his hand. And it's... Parents were able to get a hold of us, and they said, is there anything we can do to help him to like his hand? So we talked to him, and we said, hey, how about if that hand could help you climb 20 meters up to the top of a tree? Wouldn't that be a magic hand? And he said, yes. And so we started working with him, and it wasn't easy, but he finally got to the top of the tree, and he put both hands out, and he said, I have a magic hand. I climbed to the top of the tree. And then he said, I've got lots of friends. Can they have magic hands too? And so we started the Magic Hand Club. And these kids, they learned to tie ropes. They learned to climb a tree without all their fingers. And when they got to the top of the trees, they were proud of their magic hands. Something else that we learned that was really fun was children that were able to climb out of their, their wheelchairs and up in the trees. And they would be in a park, and there would be all these wheelchairs around the tree, and there would be no kids. They would all be in the top of the tree. And other families and kids, they'd come and they'd see that, and they'd go, wow, hey, are those your wheelchairs? How did you do that? Are you scared? And the kids from the top of the tree, they'd go, yeah, it's great. We can teach you how to climb a tree. And when they came down, they weren't disabled. They were heroes. Another program we had was working with Chibu University, and at Chibu University, students who want to become educators, they adopted our program, and they started working with all sorts of children before they even became teachers. So they started to learn how to interact with children and trees, and they started being empowered. They wanted to be teachers real bad, and they started calling themselves super teachers. And lastly, I would just like to share with you what a typical, none of them are typical, but one of, what one of our tree hab days would look like. This is a small park in Japan. And all of these children that come here, they all have some special needs or something they're working through. And because we have some great instructors and facilitators, we're able to help them climb a tree. And, and some of them are nervous, and it's the first time they've never done anything like this. But they start feeling empowered. And I'd like to share just two children out of all these children. One of them is Kokun, and he can talk with his talking board. And he was really nervous today because he had never climbed a tree. But when he realized that he could pull himself up in the tree, he became so excited. And then he realized this is the first time he was taller than his mother. 
And he got way up in the tree, and when he got up there and he sat on the top of the branch, he said, wow, I can't believe it's me. I can climb a tree. And when he came down, he was so excited. And this is Nana Chan. Her mother and her were so nervous. And Nana Chan, it's difficult when you can't control your facial expressions or your body, and things can be really disappointing. They weren't sure whether she could climb. But when she got in the tree, she changed. And the mother said, I've never seen that face before. <gasps> it's, that's my daughter. Look at her. She's so happy. A little miracle happened in that tree. And that is why we do what we do. We are a very small organization, but we have a big dream. And our dream is that all families and children will consider trees their friends, their teachers, and their doctors. Trees are our friends because they'll never leave us or abandon us. They're always there with their limbs wide open, waiting for us to comfort us and to help us. They're our teachers because they live their life to give. They're full of charity and kindness. They're wonderful examples of how we can be kind and how we can dream big. And doctors, because they can help us heal sad and lonely hearts. Our dream is that our tree hub pro program in some little way can help families and communities be better one tree, one child at a time. My dream is that all children can grow up like magnificent trees, standing tall and strong, kind and unique, and helping each other. Thank you. Arigatou gozaimashita.